Hey guys, now welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we're here with MPS Owner Messenger to answer more of your modified car related queries. So all the ones we didn't get a chance to answer last time, or even the ones we didn't get to go into enough detail, we're gonna be doing that today. So stick around for the rest of the video. You won't be disappointed and we'll join you just after the intro. Peace. I would love to know, and I'm sure the audience would agree, why are you here? And what do you want to achieve as the police force in general in regards to having a presence here on social media, more importantly YouTube, and I suppose as well TikTok? So we're trying to just engage with young drivers, a modified car community, because we want you to enjoy the hobby and what you do to your cars, but we want you to do it in a safe manner and to be safe on the road. Uh, and if we can explain to you what you can and can't do to the car, then hopefully as well, it will stop you getting stopped when you're out driving. And you know, it just makes it, it better for you and better for us. So last time we did cover a little bit about the differences between legislation and MOT. And it is difficult sometimes because a lot of the things um, that you would do to modify your car, there is no specific legislation that covers it. So for instance, the Flame Kit Act 2020 doesn't exist, but what happens is the construction and use legislation will cover aspects of the use of a flamer kit or the use of a screamer pipe or an external wastegate. Um, and that's what we have to look at when we're dealing with modifications like that on the car. So we're going to have a little look at uh, screamer pipes and external wastegates in the video. And um, that's coming up a little bit later. But yeah, like I say, it, it's the interpretation of the construction and use legislation um, that we use when we're out on the road. The MOT again is slightly different and there are some things that fall under construction and use that aren't tested in the MOT, like window tinting for instance. Um, and again, during this video, we're gonna have another little bit more in depth look at window tinting. So I'm sure you're wondering where this car's come from. Um, now, as we said in the previous video, we work very closely with FIRE in our collaboration with them. Um, and Learn to Live is a project that FIRE lead on um, in the colleges with young drivers and people learning to drive. And in order to do that, they've got this lovely Honda Type R um, and they take this to the colleges and use it for engagement. So in the future we're hoping to get George and the GCM channel involved in um, Learn to Live projects um, and hopefully George will be helping us moving forward with the delivery of the Learn to Live. If that's something that you're going to be interested in then please subscribe to the channel. Um, we've got loads of stuff planned with fire, some really interesting stuff um, and that's all coming in the future so please subscribe so that you can see more of that. I had a great question come in regarding wraps. Talk to me about wraps, more specifically to declaring wraps, because I can imagine the AMPR camera, if you're following a car that comes up as a different color, that could be a little bit awkward. Now this car's a great example, so talk to us everything regarding wraps. Yeah, there's no problem with wraps. Um, as you can see, this one's been uh, quite heavily wrapped. Um, what I would say is that if you are wrapping the car, um, DVLA have recently changed um, what they want in regards to you informing them about the colour of the car. Um, and what it is at the moment is if the car is over 50% of a colour change, even if it's a temporary colour change, DVLA want you to tell them about it. It's a really simple process, you just do it on the V5 uh, and you need to tell your insurance company as well. If we're following a car, for instance, and the AMPR is telling us that the car should be red and the car we're looking at is black, um, then we are going to be stopping that car and to make sure it is the correct car, we'll be potentially checking the chassis number um, or making sure that it's not on cloned plates or anything like that. So please, if you do wrap the car, then just inform DVLA and inform your insurance company that you've done it. Okay, Owen. So talk to me about external wastegates and screamer pipes. So, like we said before at the start of the video, there's no specific legislation that says about external wastegate or a screamer pipe. So what we do is we're going back to the construction and use and it will be coming under um, exhaust gases and how they escape from the car. So what it says is that the exhaust gases must go through a silencer um, before they leave the system and also, if it needs to go through a catalytic converter in order to pass the MOT emissions test, then it needs to be going through one of those as well. So, if you're rerouting those exhaust gases by using the external wastegate, 
then you need to be rerouting the exhaust gases before they go through the catalytic converter and the silencer. A screamer pipe, therefore, if it is emitting those exhaust gases to atmosphere, will not pass those tests. And, and that's basically the crux of it. Talk to me about remaps and big turbo upgrades. Okay, so from our side, there's no real issue um, with remaps or big turbo upgrades. I'm sure you're all well aware on this channel um, that the standard ST turbo that comes on the 225 is good for up to around 320 horsepower. So people will look to put on a hybrid unit or a bigger turbo. The same as with an ST180, if you go to stage three or above, then you're looking at upgrading that turbo. Like I said, no real issue with us, but you need to be telling your insurance company that you've done it. If you don't tell your insurance company that you've done it, then potentially you are invalidating your insurance. So please, please tell them if you're putting anything like that on the car. With regards to a remap, um, again, no real issue from us as long as you are telling your insurance company that you've done it. In the event of a serious RTC where somebody is potentially killed or seriously injured, we will be looking at the car and we will be inspecting it properly. We can send away the ECU, we can look at any part of that car to see whether there were any modifications or anything else that would have potentially been a causation factor in that incident. Coming soon on the channel, we're hoping to put together a video with our forensic collision section um, and they will be able to show you what they do uh, and how they go about doing it. Are there any modifications too small that you don't need to declare? In a word, no. Just tell the insurance company everything. So with things like a strut brace, tell them. With your crossover pipe, it's an upgrade to what was put there from the factory, the same with the plenum. I mean, yes, it had an original plenum, and we know that there were issues with the plenum on these engines, and people will upgrade them. So just tell the insurance company everything that you change, even down to your hydro-dipped engine covers and your, your other covers that you've got in there. Just tell the insurance company, because if it's got it on the telephone conversation that you've told them, you are covering yourself. It's in your own interest to tell them. Talk to you about neons and underglow. So this will come under the road vehicle lighting regs. And, and basically what I'm gonna say is that you can't have a visible LED. Um, so if you are gonna fit underglow or neons, the actual light bulbs themselves cannot be visible. What I will say is please don't use them on the road. If you're gonna have them, save them for show purposes. Save them for the car meets, have them on there, have them on a switch inside the car so that when you're going out to drive on the road, you can switch them off. And then that doesn't get you in trouble with any of the other vehicle um, construction and use or vehicle lighting regs um, that would constrain the height of LEDs and the height of other lights around the car. It's, it's very, very complicated. So in a simple way, save them for show use, don't use them on the road, um, and on the road of course you can't have the blue and the green, and you can't show the white light to the rear other than the reversing light, and you can't show a red light to the front. So the safest option is save them for the car meets, save them for the shows. I thought that underglow and neons had died out in the 90s, but maybe George you should get some of yours. Talk to me about big wings and what would entice a policeman to stop someone with an upgraded spoiler? Okay, so what we're looking for with anything that's fitted with a big wing is just to make sure that that wing is safe. So what you can't have on it is things like sharp edges or anything that could hurt uh, a member of the public, or if it was involved in an accident, would be a danger to anything that it collides with. Um, so that's what we'd be looking for with regards to big wings. Um, clearly on a car like this, the big wing looks great. Um, but there are some cars that people will fit a nice big wing on, but it's just no. <laughs> Your face! Brilliant! What do you do in the event of seeing someone using launch control at the traffic lights? Is there a reason for you to stop them? And what would make you do so? Lots of new cars come with some really cool bits like launch control, but there's a time and a place for using it. So traffic lights in built up areas is really not the place to be using launch control. If someone took a walk out in front of you um, or a car came across that junction, you'd have no chance of stopping. So please save things like launch control for safe places. You know, take it onto the track, use it on the track where it's as safe as possible for you to use them. What is a section 59? And what behavior do you have to display to be given one? So Section 59 was brought in under the Police Reform Act and it was brought in specifically to deal with antisocial behaviour with regards to vehicle issues. 
Now, a Section 59 can be issued to somebody if they are demonstrating driving without due care and attention or driving elsewhere than on the road, um, and also that antisocial behaviour element. So things like wheel spinning and things like that would fall under that antisocial element as they are likely to cause harassment to a member of the public. A Section 59 warning is normally issued and that will last for 12 months for a first offence. However, there are some circumstances in which we don't need to issue that warning. If you've already had a warning within the 12 months and you are stopped once again for an antisocial behaviour offence using the vehicle, then potentially you can be reported for that offence and your car seized as well. So to cut a long story short, if you are at a meet um, and you're sitting revving your engine with loud pops and bangs, that can be covered under section 59 as can wheel spinning and donuts and things like that. So it's about behaving responsibly at the car meets um, and therefore not attracting attention um, and therefore a section 59 won't be necessary. I mean, in the last question we spoke regarding a section 59. Now you've also mentioned there's another one called the PG9 if I'm not mistaken. Kindly explain to the viewers what that means and why would they be given something like that? Okay, so PG9 actually relates to the form that you're given should your car fall under the prohibition. Now, if a qualified officer examines your car at the roadside and they find something on the car that is or is likely um, to make the car uh, unfit for use, um, or where the driving of the vehicle would potentially involve a risk of injury to a member of the public or another road user, then they can issue you with a prohibition um, and your car won't be allowed to be driven on the road. You'll be issued with the PG9 form um, and all the instructions will be on the form as to how you, you deal with it um, and what you have to do in relation to get that prohibition lifted. Right guys, so just to put this into context, Owen's got the tint man right here, which you saw in the last video. And obviously my driver's side window is completely factory standard, no tint whatsoever. He's got the machine here, which will send a piece of light from the machine to a receiver to then denote the legality of the window. Obviously in my instance, it's completely legal. So hopefully, if he uses the machine correctly, it should pull up about 72.5. So using the tint man, um, we can see from this one that out of the factory, this window is currently letting through 72.6% of the light. Okay, so if we're talking in practical terms, that's letting through near enough 100% of what you're allowed. What we're going to do now is apply another tint to the window so you can see how much the tint takes it down below what is the legal limit. If you wouldn't mind, could you put that piece of tint in front of the lens just so that the audience can actually see that it really is a very light shade of window tint? It might be quite difficult for you guys to see on camera, I don't know, it's hard to say. But guys, this is what we would class as legal, the smallest grade tint you can use. So it's a really good opportunity for us to put it over the window and show just what the tint man picks up. So if we put the tint on the window, this is a 30% tint. Using the tint man again, we can see that it's now taken it down to 51% of available light is going through that window. So is that still legal? So that is now no longer legal to use on the road. But obviously what they don't take into consideration is there is going to be a slight colouring to the window from factory anyway, is that correct? Yeah, so if your window was letting through 100% of the available light, then putting this tint on it would take it down to pretty much the legal limit. But because your window is already coming out of the factory with a tint in the glass, the tint that you're applying to the window now, i.e. the film, is taking it down to just under 52% of the available light going through the window. Okay, so that's nearly 20% below what you are allowed to have. Oh, and just to finish off today's video, in the last one, you actually went into a tiny bit of detail in regards to drink and drug driving. Now, just give me a little bit more detail to those wondering, what are the specifics, what is against the law, and what isn't? Yeah, last time we covered it a little bit about roadside stops um, and I didn't give you the actual um, legislation with regards to what the limit is. Okay, so the limit for drink driving is 35 micrograms of alcohol in 100 millilitres of breath. What I would say is 
just don't drink and drive. What do you do if you stop Joe Bloggs on the way home from his wonderful weekend trip to Amsterdam? What then? So the thing with cannabis is it's a difficult one because you can smoke the cannabis and the effects may last a few hours and then wear off. However, the primary metabolites can be absorbed into your fat cells and they can be released at any time. Therefore, we could stop you a few days later and you could potentially test positive at the roadside for cannabis. So, what I would say is in this country, cannabis is still illegal. You're not allowed to smoke it, so please do not smoke cannabis and drive. That is the simplest way of avoiding getting that positive test okay thank you for getting to the end of the video i hope you enjoyed it what we're trying to do here is just give you something that benefits you um, we're trying to help you we're not trying to persecute the modified car scene um, as you know from the previous videos i really enjoy modified cars i've had a lot of modified cars i've done it myself and i've been there and i get your passion for it you know cars like George's here you know they're great things to have and we want you to enjoy it but we want you to enjoy it properly and you know to do it safely and well so that's why we're here and that's what we're doing it for um, I can't go into all the legislation as I've said earlier but what we are doing is putting links to that legislation in the bio so please if you're interested go to the bio you can click on it there and you can see actually what it says right guys you've done it so thank you so much for reaching the end of today's video big shout out to the Exeter Devon Cornwall and Dorset Police and also the Learn to Live team as well we have so much more content to come if you want to be notified of when that's being uploaded just press the subscribe button underneath click the little bell button and you will get a notification when we upload now guys if you haven't already click a thumbs up as that shows youtube that you enjoy this video let me know all of your feedback in the comments section below guys we'll see you next time i best go and get this video edited but for now gcm roll the outro peace